Hey, what's up? We're going to look at atomic structure. Atoms are really important because they make up everything around us. So we need to understand their structure. First thing to know about atoms is they're incredibly tiny, way too small to see. And their size, which you need to know, is 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meter. That's their diameter, or 0.1 nanometers. It's unimaginably small. So the best way I have to think about it is if you take a meter and you cut it up into a billion pieces, then you take one of those billion pieces and cut it up into 10 there you have the size of an atom. They're too small to actually see, therefore we have to use models to understand what they would look like if we could see within an atom. And the model that we're going to use is this Neil, Niels Bohr's planetary model, which was built upon on top of Rutherford's model, which was built itself upon Thomson's plum pudding model. So in the planetary model, we have a nucleus, which was discovered by Ernest Rutherford. And in there, we've got protons and neutrons. They're fixed within there. It's where most of the mass of an atom is found. Surrounding that, we have, as Niels Bohr discovered, energy levels. And in these energy levels, we have electrons. And these electrons are not fixed. They're actually able to orbit the nucleus, just like the planets orbit the sun. Ernest Rutherford, in his gold, um, gold um, foil alpha particle scattering experiment, discovered that atoms are 99.999% free space. So atoms make up everything yet themselves are made up of almost nothing. So three subatomic particles that we need to know about. Subatomic just means particles that are smaller than atoms themselves. And you need to know about protons, electrons, and neutrons. And we need to know the mass, the charge, and the location of these. So protons, we say, have a mass of one. We use atomic mass units rather than kilograms. They have a charge of plus one. We said that protons are positive. You can remember that using the P. And they're found within the nucleus. Electrons have a mass of 0.0005. They have a really small mass, and that's why they're able to move so quick in those energy levels. They're negative, so we say they have a charge of minus one. They have exactly the opposite charge of protons, and they are found in energy levels. These are sometimes called shells or orbits. Neutrons also have a mass of one, just like protons, but unlike protons, they don't have a charge. They have a charge of zero. We say they're neutral. That's why they've got the name neutrons. They're also found in the nucleus. So there we have the general structure of the atom. Where we've got the nucleus, the energy levels, and free space. And we've got the three subatomic particles, which you need to know the mass, the charge, and the location of. If you were to look on the periodic table, you'd see the symbols for all the elements that we have. And here's an example of one for lithium. There are two numbers which are really important. And the one I want you to always look at first is this smaller number. And we call this smaller number the atomic number. And the definition of the atomic number is the number of protons. So it's how many protons that atom has itself. But this is always equal to the number of electrons. So if we have a look here, lithium has an atomic number of three, which means it has three protons. Therefore, it must have three electrons. So it's got three positives and it's got three negatives. And these two charges cancel out perfectly. And this is why all atoms are neutral. That means they don't have an overall charge. The next number to look at is the massive number, the larger number. And we call that the atomic mass. And this is defined as the number of protons plus the number of of neutrons. So in this case, lithium has an atomic mass of seven, and that's because it has three protons, which we've seen before. Therefore, it must have four neutrons. Let's look at a few more examples. So the first one that we've got here is fluorine 19. It's got an atomic number of nine, which means that it must have nine protons, and the number of electrons must be the same, so it has nine electrons. It's got an atomic mass of 19, which means it must have 19 protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. So let's work out how many neutrons it has. And there's a little formula to work out the number of neutrons. And this is the only calculation you have to do in atomic structure. You do the atomic mass, take away the atomic number. So in this case, we've got 19 for the atomic mass, and we've got an atomic number of nine. 
So it's 19 take away nine, which leaves us with 10 neutrons. So in the nucleus, we have nine protons and 10 neutrons. That gives us the atomic mass of 19 because there's 19 particles in that nucleus. And we're just left with the electrons, which go in the energy levels. From chemistry, you remember that two electrons go in the first shell or energy level. Therefore, we've got seven left to go in the second energy level. And this is why fluorine is in group seven. It has seven electrons in its outer energy level. Another example, carbon 12, the atomic number, the smaller number we always look at first, and that is equal to six. Therefore, it has six protons and it has six electrons. The atomic mass is 12. So if we now work out the number of neutrons, we just have to use our formula again. We do the atomic mass and we take away the atomic number. So in this case, it's 12, take away six, which leaves us with six neutrons. So in the nucleus, we have the six protons, but we also have six neutrons. There are 12 particles in total. That's why we have an atomic mass of 12. Now we just got to fit the electrons in and we've got six. Only two can go in the first energy level. So that leaves us with four for the next energy level. And you can see they go there. And carbon is within group four. The last example that we'll look at is phosphorus. So phosphorus has got an atomic number of 15. We always look at the smaller number first, the atomic number. That means it must have 15 protons. And to make it neutral, it must have 15 electrons because the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. If we look at the atomic mass now, it's got an atomic mass of 31. So to work out the number of neutrons, we use that formula again, atomic mass, take away the atomic number. It's as simple as that. So we do 31, take away 15, and a little bit of simple maths leaves us with 16 neutrons. So in the nucleus of phosphorus, we have 15 protons, and we have 16 neutrons. You can see that adds up to 31. And that's why we have an atomic mass of 31. All we've got to do now is fill in these 15 electrons. Two go in the first shell. Eight can go in the next energy level or shell, which leaves us with a total of five for the outer energy level. And phosphorus is therefore in group five. And there we have it. So in summary, this is what you need to know about atoms. Atoms are tiny, one times 10 to the minus 10 of a meter. They're made of three subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. And you need to the mass, charge, and location of each of those. In the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. The electrons orbit in energy levels or shells or orbits. And atoms themselves are actually 99.999% free space, as discovered by Ernest Rutherford. When you look at a symbol for an element, there are two numbers. The smaller number is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And it's always the same as the number of electrons. And that's why atoms are neutral. The number of protons and the number of electrons are always the same and their charges are opposite, so they cancel out. The larger number or the massive number is what's called the atomic mass. And that is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the only calculation you have to do on atomic structure is working at the number of neutrons. And therefore you do the atomic mass number, take away the atomic number. It's as simple as that. Thanks for listening and see you all soon.